Uh, the committee has been around for quite a few decades, probably uh, 40 years. In fact, we had one of our members retire from the committee last year, and he had served, I believe it was 41 years on the committee. So it was quite a retirement. Um, there's been about three chairs since uh, in the last 30 or so years, and I'm the, the third of those three chairs. Uh, 1990, the, the CSA published the uh, full body harness standard, which I think really kind of broke things open for the CSA. Um, uh, industries were beginning to, to head in that direction. They certainly existed prior to the publication of that full body harness standard. There's a number of things that are happening in the marketplace and in an industry that, uh, that are driving some of our work. Uh, certainly when it comes to the uh, Z259.2.5, that was a technical subcommittee that identified through their um, requirement of our committee to uh, explain the relationship between their work and other worldwide standards. In that process, they identified uh, what we refer to as uh, the fallback scenario. Um, the point two point five to remind is a, uh, for fixed vertical ladders and there was no worldwide standard that addressed falling back and uh, falling backwards. The person's hand releases from the ladder and they, and they fall backwards. In terms of uh, updates, uh, we have some exciting updates to uh, point 2.2, point two, which is retractable devices. It's a new and innovative approach uh, that forms kind of the backbone to that standard. It'll actually influence some of our other standards, the work that that technical subcommittee has done. Um, point 15, which utilizes a series of normative uh, appendices uh, where you can keep adding different types of anchoring devices, which is what point 15 covers, is anchoring devices. That's very exciting because it's always on the ready to take on new innovations in the marketplace. In terms of uh, brand new standards, point 17, which is our system selection standard, very exciting. It's, it's absolutely near to publication um, and it covers the ability for people to combine uh, different products from the, all the Z259 series of standards. You know, in other words, how to s select systems. Finally, uh, point 19 is another exciting uh, area, brand new standard. It involves training and for myself as chair, I really wanted to wait for the work of the CSA Z1001 uh, management of occupational health and safety training. Uh, that standard to become published, which it did uh, about a year and a half ago, and immediately we began work on, on that point 19 standard. Uh, originally, five years ago or so, we wrote a five-year plan, and we've executed that, I think, quite to the letter. And now it's time to actually write a new five-year plan incorporating some of these ideas. Where I think we're going to end up going is uh, more specifically a standard for training, a standard for rescue equipment, a uh, standard for rope access equipment, and then we'd probably circle back around and have management approaches to both rescue and, and rope access.